If you're anything like me, you don't just have games on Steam. You have them on Epic, GOG, Origin, Humble, the list goes on. Sometimes it's hard to keep track of what you have in your library, let alone if it's installed or not. Today, I'm going to introduce a solution to your problem, and it's called Playnite. This is an open source game library manager with the simple goal of providing a unified interface for all of your games. Playnite allows you to import games from basically any library you can think of, from Amazon to Fanatical to GOG itself, and even allows emulated games. Since it's open source, there are constantly new themes and updates being added. All of this completely for free. Now that I have you hooked, keep watching and I'll show you how to get it installed. All right, so here we are on the Play Night website. Uh, I'll be leaving a link for this in the description down below. Uh, so just go to this website here. Uh, then we're just gonna go and then hit the download button here on the front page and it'll download as you can see. Now, if we open it up, uh, just a very simple installer here. As you can see, there's some options if you wanna change where it actually installs. Uh, I'm just gonna hit install. And I'll just wait here for a few minutes as it downloads. Alrighty, so now as soon as it's downloaded and installed, we're greeted with a first time configuration kind of thing. Uh, this is just basically to help you add your libraries. Uh, so they're all there once you start it up for the first time. If we click next here, we can see all the libraries that I want to integrate here. Uh, for purpose of demonstration, I'm just gonna do Steam. As you can see here, it'll download all of what it needs to. And now it's just asking me some additional information here, such as uh, additional accounts I want to connect. Uh, but if you just have one Steam account, it should just be good to click next. It'll say configuration finished here. So we'll click finish. And now, as you can see, open it up, it's going to have to download everything. But here are my Steam games. Alrighty, so now that all my stuff is downloaded, you can see that we have all of my icons here for my Steam library. Uh, one important thing to note here is that this isn't actually every single game in my library. Only the games that you have downloaded or installed will appear here. Um, so these are all the ones that I have currently installed on Steam right now. As you can see, we have a very nice background picture, icon, and then like news. Uh, so I, this is a very nice layout, honestly. I think I do like this a little bit more than the Steam layout. Next year, I'll show you guys the different ways that you can organize your library. So obviously there's this way here, how it's all kind of in a list view. Okay, so as you can see from these three buttons here, these are pretty much just for the order that you want things in. Uh, displayed here. So we have the filters. You can display um, for most or recently played. Uh, you can group them by different things such as last played, installation status, developer. And then this one allows you to just um, resort them so I can like organize them by release date. And then the newest stuff will be up here and the oldest stuff down here. Or flip-flop, sorry. One thing that I had noticed that seems a little bit weird is um, on the time played or last played for all my games, it says I've never played any of them, uh, which is not true. I've played all of these at least for a little bit, so I think this is just the time played off play night, but I'm not 100% sure for that. Next year, I'll show you guys the different ways you can view your library. So right now, I, on I obviously have it just like in the list like this. This is most similar to the Steam interface, but the list and then like the big kind of screen with the game here. Uh, so these three buttons here, this one is the details view, which I'm currently in. Uh, list view, which is just like this. It's pretty much just a, a long list of games. And then we have grid view, which is kind of similar to big picture mode. Honestly, I'm not too much of a fan of this one. Sometimes I am, but uh, it's kind of cool seeing the big wall of your games like this, definitely. But honestly, this isn't my favorite. Alright, so if I were to press F11 here, it would open up big screen mode, um, which is very similar to the Steam's big picture mode. Uh, it's just very controller based um, for controlling and opening games and stuff. However, with my court recording setup, if I do that, it just will cause a whole slew of problems. So I have all my Steam games here, but let's say I wanted to add my Epic Games library. I forgot to add it when I was doing the first time configuration, and I want to add just every game in my Epic Games library that I have downloaded. Sure. So, we're going to click this here, the controller thing, uh, go to add-ons, and now these are the different add-ons. This is how you get um, different themes and stuff, which I'll show you guys in a second here. Since we have nothing installed yet, we're just going to go to browse, uh, click on library, just click OK. And now you can see we have all the different kind of library integrations that we can do. So there's the epic one that we'll be doing for the, uh, right now, but you can see uh, GOG, uh, Fanatical, Humble Library, Nintendo Library, I'm not really sure how that would quite work, but then we have like Origin, Riot, Rockstar Games, Ubisoft, Xbox, so like pretty much everything that you can think of they have on here. So once you find whatever one you want, I'll be doing Epic for this one. You just click it, hit install, 
And when this happens, when you're installing add-ons after the first time configuration, you do have to restart the program for any changes to take place. So let's do that real quick. Alrighty, so my plan I just restarted, as you can see, I still only have my Steam games here, no Epic Games quite yet. Uh, so the final step for this, click the controller again, go to Update, Game Library, and if you want to update all you can, I'm just going to go to Epic, because uh, I just did Epic, and as you'll see, it'll download all the, the metadata, so just the pictures that it needs. And my Epic Library is actually pretty small, um, I only have two games on there, Steep and Tony Hawk, uh, downloaded right now. but. As we can see here, there's Tony Hawk. If I get in, click the I, there's information about it. And if, we're, if I were to hit play right now, it would just open right up into Tony Hawk. So for installing themes and stuff like that, if you want your plan to look different, uh, I don't blame you. This is this design is pretty similar to Steve, honestly. So I'd want to change it if I were you. Click the controller, uh, go to add-ons here, and then we're going to go to browse and then themes desktop. Theme's full screen is pretty much the big picture mode, the full screen mode I mentioned earlier. Uh, I'll just be doing the desktop one uh, for today, but you can customize both. Uh, so there's here's the most popular themes here. I'm just going to go with the um, days one, minimal clean theme based on transparency. Looks good to me. I'm going to hit install, save, restart. And as you can see now, the theme is completely different. To add emulators to your Play Night browser and library, simply go to the controller up here, uh, go to library, and then configure emulators. As you can see here, this will kind of pop up here. Uh, if you click download, they actually have a good amount of, of um, emulators that you can download already, like RetroArch, uh, Dolphin's in there somewhere. So any kind of emulation, they kind of got you covered here. Um, but if you already have your own uh, Dolphin configuration, you're going to go right down here to where it just says import, click that. Uh, it looks a little bit weird with the theme I have on right now, so I do apologize, um, but the buttons are going to be the same. So then you just scan folder, and you're just going to have to find where you have your dolphin located. I have mine located on my uh, desktop here, so dolphin here, just my dolphin folder, select. It'll scan, and it'll find my dolphin.exe, just like that. Click import, save. Perfect. Now the emulator is on to Play Night. To add ROMs now to emulate, go back to the controller here, add game, emulated game. You're going to go to add scanner, uh, scan with emulator, whichever emulator you want. In this case, I'm going to be doing Dolphin, uh, Nintendo GameCube. I'm going to be searching through my GameCube games. Actually, you know what? I'll do Wii games because my GameCube uh, folder is a little bit larger. And then you're just going to go to scan and look for where we have our ROM stored. Mine are all in here, so I'll just do select folder, start scan. Now it's going to scan that folder to find all of the ROMs that you have in there. This may take a little while. Uh, for me, it's taken a little while for GameCube, and it looks like we've taken a minute now too. So after everything is done scanning here, as you can see, we have some information pulled up. If you want, you can change some of the information, uh, like the region, stuff like that. Whatever doesn't really matter, you just hit import, and now as you can see, it'll be importing our things right into our library here. If you couldn't tell already, I'm actually a pretty big fan of the Play Night launcher. Normally, I would stray away from something like this, but as time goes on, the reality of all my games being on one platform is becoming less and less likely. Especially with Humble giving us origin keys in the last few Humble Choice bundles, I think something like this is actually pretty helpful for both launching your games, as well as organizing them and keeping track of what you do and don't have already. If you have any trouble or problems with the Play Night Launcher, feel free to leave a comment down below. I'll be replying and helping you guys out for at least the next few months here under the video. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.